Hello folks, this is Scott with Dallas Paint Correction and Luxury Microfiber. I'm sorry for the angle and the lighting, but here in Texas it could tornado any minute. It's getting really hot and humid, so I'm in my garage. I'm kind of scared of the weather. But I want to talk about my DPC Shield. This is my ceramic coating, which is now on the market. I released it last night. This coating here is a silica titanium blend. I want to talk about how you need to prep the surface before applying my coating. Really, this is one-on-one when it comes to coatings. We want to make sure we wash the car first. Use whatever soap you like. Some guys will use a decon soap like Purple Power Vehicle Bolt Wash. That's cool. Whatever floats your boat, just go ahead and wash the vehicle first. The next thing we're going to do is use an iron remover. This could be a product like Iron X, Adams Fallout Remover, Sonax, Sonax has a fallout remover, whichever one you're comfortable with. This just happens to be Eagle One, black and plastic coat. This is cool, this is an iron remover. So after we wash the car, we want to use an iron remover. I've got many videos on how to use an iron remover, but I kind of want to go through these steps pretty quick in this video. So we wash the car, we use an iron remover, we rinse the vehicle off, now we want to clay. Obviously, we want to do this out of direct sunlight on a cool panel if we absolutely can, okay? That's going to give you best results. Now we want to lightly clay the car. Why, Scott? We just used an iron remover. Wasn't that good enough? No, nope. there are some bonded contaminants on the paint that an iron remover will not remove. So use a clay bar. I typically like a clay bar. If you want to use a clay towel, clay mitt, whatever floats your boat, whatever you have in stock, lightly clay the vehicle after the iron decontamination. Now, you may choose to do a two-step correction or an aggressive one-step, whatever that may be, that's up to you. What I'm doing in this particular scenario, and you should do this every time you apply a ceramic coating, whether it be mine or somebody else's, we want to do a very light polish of the paint. Why? We want to make sure we absolutely got everything off the paint. Maybe there's an old wax or sealant. Whatever the case may be, we want to lightly polish the car to make sure it's absolutely clean. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, with that said, you can use something like Meguiar's M205. You can use something like Sonex Perfect Finish. In this particular demonstration here, if you will, I'm going to use Meguiar's D302. We don't want to use an all-in-one polish like HD Speed or anything that can leave anything behind. We want to do a light polish. We want to take advantage of these light abrasives and the pad just to make sure that we've polished the paint, make sure we've got an absolutely clean surface. When you use the polish that you prefer and you put it on the paint, you're only going to go over the paint maybe three or four section passes. You don't have to be on here very long. Just let the weight of the machine, the pad, and the polish do the work for you and go all the way around the car pretty quickly. It won't take you very long. Again, a light polish is always recommended, so we make sure that everything is off the paint. Once we've done that, right, we've washed it, we've iron decontaminated it, we've clayed it, we've done a light polish, we want to use a paint prep. This paint prep here is, abs is a paint prep I'm working on. But you can use Prep Ball, you can use G-Technic Panel Wipe, you can use Car Pro Eraser, you can use Duplicolor Grease and Wax Remover, whatever kind of floats your boat, what you have in stock. I like to go around the car twice with a paint prep before I apply a ceramic coating. I want to make sure I've got all that residue off that might still be there from the polish, the iron remover, the claying process, and the washing process, okay? Once we get there, boy, that's a lot to do. It seems like it's a lot, but it will go pretty quickly. And we want to do this properly so when we put the ceramic coating on, it can truly bond and give us its maximum durability and longevity. Again, my coating, it's going to come in a four ounce bottle. It's around $39 for the product. You can find the link below these, this video in the show more box to my website. This is a ceramic coating. It's a silica and titanium blend. You'll notice it comes in a four ounce bottle. You'll also notice that it will come with a cap, right, that allows it to stay airtight. And there'll be a little red plug inside the bottle that you remove. Folks, if you do not open this product, it will last for about a year unopened. When you open it, this is where the clock starts ticking. This has a very stable solvent transfer solution in it. I've had this bottle for about five months. Yes, I've coated many vehicles and I got a little bit of the coating left. Will it last a complete year after you open it up? 
Don't know really. You want to know why? It depends on how you store it. Make sure you keep it as airtight as possible. Put that little red plug back in it and control and put it in a controlled environment. Room temperature, out of direct sunlight. But folks, what I do with this is because there's so much product that I'm giving you for multiple, multiple coats and multiple cars that you can work on. When you open this up, it won't have a traditional little dropper or nipple on it. Why? Because there's so much product, you're going to be holding on to this for a while. I don't want that little dripper, which it will clog and crystallize, and you'll be poking it and making it drop back down into the bottle, so I don't want to do that. What I do is I'm going to take a microfiber applicator. You can use a suede applicator, whatever floats your boat. There's guys that will only use suede. That's cool. I honor that. What I'm going to do is open up this bottle and apply it to the microfiber applicator. What I do, I want to do half this hood, right? On my initial application, it's kind of like applying alcohol to a cotton ball. I'm going to tip it over, get one little dot on the applicator, tip it again, and get two little dots on the applicator, right? Once I've done that, I always want to make sure I close the bottle up and make sure it remains airtight. Now what I'm going to do is massage it into the paint. This is enough, these two little dots is enough to do half this hood. I'm going to lightly go over the surface, kind of do whatever patterns kind of float in your boat. You want to go back and forth, you want to do a crosshatch pattern. Obviously, you want to be able to see the transfer solution. It looks like oil slick on water, right, when you rub it into the paint. Go ahead and make sure you've got even distribution all the way across the paint. You can go back and forth, do your crosshatch pattern. Once you've got the applicator or the solvent, the transfer solution, and the ceramic coating on the surface of the paint, you want to wait about two to four minutes depending on temperature and humidity. Let it sit there for about two or four minutes. Oh, what you're going to do after you let it sit for two to four minutes, you're going to use two towels. I like low nap towels. Guys, if you're patient with me next week, I'm going to have what I call my utility towel that will be perfect for coatings. But a lot of guys like a short nap towel versus a long nap. I get it because you know silica or true ceramic coatings can be a little tacky when you apply them. So guys like short nap towels. I'm going to have two of them. One of them is going to be my leveling towel. What does that mean? Now that the product has sat there for two to four minutes, if the, I'm just trying to go through this quickly in the video, I take my leveling towel. This is not my buff off towel. I want to lightly go across the paint and just one more time make sure I've applied the ceramic coating with an even distribution over the paint. I'll lightly massage it in. This is where you'll see a lot of the rainbowing start to happen when you apply a ceramic coating. I'll let it sit there for about 30 seconds. I take a second towel. This is my buff off towel. Oh my God, the humidity is unbelievable in Dallas right now. I'm going to take my second towel after I level it out, wait 30 seconds, just go in and lightly buff off the surface. When you buff off shield, you'll notice that the surface kind of feels rubbery. That's okay, don't panic. The titanium and the silica need to cure for about 24 hours. Once it's fully cured, 24 hours later, this paint is going to be very, very slick, but it will feel a little rubbery after you knock it down and completely buff it off the paint. Very user friendly. It's a DIY coating for a reason. The solvent's very stable. You're not going to have big problems with high spots. You can get them, and I'll explain to you how to take care of that. If you didn't buff it off properly, you notice 24 hours later when you look at your car, you have a high spot. There's two ways to resolve it. You can take DPC Shield again, put it on an applicator, and rub it over that high spot, and let it reactivate, and you can get rid of that high spot. If the high spot was a tremendous amount of product there and it dried and it, that little trick doesn't work, then you will have to lightly polish to be able to knock that high spot off, okay? Now, here are the recommendations. Once you've gone through these steps for one layer, if you wanted to put a second layer on the paint, I'm going to tell you to wait three hours to do so. I'm going to get really technical with you here. If you can wait till the next day to apply the second layer, that's even better. But if you don't, you don't have that much time to wait. Wait three hours to apply the second coating. The second coating will give you somewhere around 18 to 24 months of durability. One layer gives you about a year. Folks, this is different for each car. You know, it, here in Dallas, I can get an easy year out of one coating. A guy in Lake Placid, New York may not. That's just the 
It's just the reality. It's the real world of any type of coating or any type of sealant or wax we put on the car. Now when I want to go maintain this, this is where the beauty of my armor, which is my silica-based SiO2 sealant, folks, this was always the vision for DPC Shield. Once you've either got one layer or two layers on the car, I'm going to tell you that you can use armor over it 24 hours later. Let it stay away from water for 24 hours and don't apply armor till the 24 hour period is over, okay? This is really the cool part with armor. I have it at a high concentration. I want you to be able to cut it in half because when I cut this in half, I get two bottles for 1250, two 16 ounce bottles, right? I will maintain shield at 50-50 with armor. Why do I do that? Because at 1250 a bottle, I'll use it more often. I'll use it as a drying aid every time I wash my car. I may top it off once or twice a month at 50-50 because I'm not breaking the bank. There are products I'd like to use over ceramic coating, but some of these maintenance sprays and boosters cost $40, $50 for 16 ounces and you can't dilute them. I almost cringe when I go to use them. I'd like to use them more often, but that was the beauty of armor. That was always the long-term vision that it would be used over shield. Folks, here are my recommendations. Wash the car. Iron decontaminate the car. Mechanically decontaminate it with a clay bar or a clay towel, whatever floats your boat. Do a very light polish or a two-step or one-step, whatever you want to do, but we want to do a light polish so there's nothing on the paint. Use a paint prep, whether it be prep ball, car pro eraser, Duplicolor grease and wax remover, G-Technic panel wipe. I like to go around twice just to be absolutely sure. Put one coating, one layer of the coating, let it sit for two to four minutes, lightly level it out after that two to four minute mark, and then take your second towel 30 seconds later and absolutely buff off the coating. Let it remain dry for 24 hours. After that, the car can get wet. After that, you can apply armor. I am going to make one little silly recommendation. This is kind of cool. If you can keep your car away from washing it for the next three days, that's cool. If your car gets heavily soiled after that 24-hour cure period, the next day your car comes into some nasty stuff, you can go ahead and wash it. Don't panic. But it's always best to not wash it for three days if you can. That would be ideal. Again, you can use armor at full strength over it. Or again, you can split it in half, save your money, and use it as you wish. I want you guys to enjoy it. I don't want you to cringe every time you use a product because it's too expensive. There's no reason for it, guys, okay? I love you. This coating is a really nice DIY coating, very user-friendly. You can use it in direct sunlight, but I'll recommend in the beginning until you guys get a hang of it. Your learning curve kind of flattens out real quick with it. Then you can use it outside in the elements. Don't use it on a smoking hot panel, but it can be used on a cool panel or lightly warm, okay? I like it on the paint. I like it on plastic trim. I like it on headlights, taillights. I do say it can be used on glass. This is going to be personal preference. I'm not a big fan. How about this for honesty and transparency? I'm not a big fan of using DP Shield on glass. It's not a typical glass coating like glass parency, okay? It can be used on glass, but it, I don't use it that way, but you can make sure the glass is absolutely clean. When I do apply it to glass, there's a little trick. I wipe it on the glass and immediately buff it off. I don't let it sit there for three or four minutes. That's how I use it on glass to get absolutely streak-free glass. Woo, that's a lot to think about, guys. I love you. It's a lot of product for an economical or easy on the pocket or wallet, if you will. The coating will the bottle, four ounces, will coat several, several cars. I've had this bottle here now for about four or five months. The fluid remains stable as long as you keep it airtight once you open it for the first time and always store it out of direct sunlight in room temperature, you'll be fine. Woo! A lot of stuff to consider there. If you have any other questions, leave comments down below. Join my Facebook group, Dallas Paint Correction on Facebook. There are guys using this product that will help you through all sorts of questions you have if you can't get to me fast enough. But folks, there is the process of applying DPC Shield, and really this process applies for all ceramic coatings. If you happen to have a ceramic coating on your car now, and you want to put DPC Shield on it, maybe that coating is at the end of its life expectancy, 
I recommend you ask that coating manufacturer, what do they recommend to remove it? A lot of people are going to say to me, hey, Scott, I got CarPro, Gion on my car. It's been on there for a year. How do I get it off? I'm going to just say, hey, talk to Gion, talk to CarPro, and ask them their recommendations for removing their coating before you apply DPC Shield if you find yourself in that scenario. Love you so much. 14-minute video, folks. Lot to consider. This process is very easy once you get a hang of it. It will go very quickly for you. Thank God the coating lasts a year, right? Can get up to 18 to 24 months if you want to put a second layer on it. But wait that three-hour mark. For me, I can keep my car in the garage, and I'll put the second coat on the car like 12 or 15 hours later. I like it a little bit better that way. But you can apply it three hours later if you're a pro and you don't have the time. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. So sorry for the lighting. Love you.